There's a quorum of queens reigning here at the Emerson Colonial Theater, all the wives of King Henry VIII. And given that his was a beastly court of beheadings, these queens have a lot to say in the hit musical Six. I spoke with two of them, Kaylin Wilcoxon, who plays Catherine of Aragon, and Storm Lever, who's Anne Boleyn. Thank you both for joining us today. We appreciate it. Of course. Thank you for having us. So Kayla, I'll, let me start with you. How do you describe the show? Oh man, I would describe this show as a pop musical that is telling the stories of Henry VIII's six wives from their point of view. So you're not getting any male perspective from this. It is all from the female perspective and it is kind of outrageously hilarious in so many different ways. Um, I'm hoping that everyone walks out of the theater um, with a different mindset than mm -hmm. what they came in and give people a different, I don't know, perspective on different things in life. Well, let's start with a little history, quick history mm -hmm. lesson. Yes, yes. Who remind people Anne Boleyn as you see her? If you've never heard of Anne Boleyn, <laughs> she was one that is noted to have changed the history of England. The church changed after her. She was the first beheaded queen. She was a troublemaker back in her day and stirred up a lot throughout history. And in our story, they kind of shift that narrative where she still stirs the pot oh, a little yeah. bit. <laughs> It really gets to let you see that she was a victim of her circumstances and of society and it wasn't all on her. And the same little history lesson with Catherine of Aragon? Ah, oh, well Catherine, I mean, she is the fiercest queen. She is the first one and really the only one in my brain. Baby, in all the time I've been by your side I never lost control no matter how many times I knew you lied Had my golden rule, gotta keep my cool, yeah Baby. There wouldn't be actually any other queens if Catherine would have just had a son and because she didn't, um, actually that's the only reason the other queens came in. She was married to him for 24 years and she was a Spanish warrior so she came over and she's probably one of the strongest and most powerful women that he encountered um, because she challenged him and she did not let him run all over her. So how does this work then? We've always, I think through history, understood these queens in the context mm -hmm. of their husband. So he is always the framing. Does this completely upend that? There is no yeah. Henry in our story. <laughs> so, so often you look at different texts that are written about these queens, different articles that have come out, different documentaries that are made, and oftentimes it's through the perspective of a man. Yeah. And you get that male lens, you get that male perspective, and this is our, our, our team, our choreographer, the, the band, the voices telling the story are all um, by female presenting people. I think that just changes the narrative of the story. I think it changes the ownership of the story yes. that we haven't often gotten that perspective on. And it just is a beautiful retelling that, Truly. yeah, just it's a different kind of ownership. What's the significance of that, of having a primarily female identifying team driving everything? I feel like it held the room to such a higher standard. Um, the room was healthy in a way that I don't think that a lot of rooms in this industry, when you go into rehearsal spaces and things, like sometimes the space can be very unhealthy or very unwavering or just a lot of tension because of the different people that are in the room. But something about this room, when we walked in, it was just completely healthy. It was all open and everyone was just very kind to each mm -hmm. other. It was another, I don't know, it was just giving yeah. female vibes. It I was think <laughs> there's also a great layer that also is in this show. The show talks about the competitive nature yes. that women often have, that we pin throughout history, throughout society, we pin women against each other cat because fights. there's, yeah, Always. cat fights, that there can only be one. And this room, this story really shows us that that doesn't have to be the case. Well, let's talk about the singing. How, I, again, upending preconceptions, how does English history live in pop music? I well, mean, the lyrics are... They're genius. They're they genius. did an incredible job. It's funny because it's historical, but it's cheeky. It's using modern references yeah. to talk about, um, give you historical Tudor content Robert and, and like, yeah, it's context. Just, yeah. Didn't look like my profile picture. Too, too bad I don't agree. And so I'm gonna it's just 
just so smart in that way. It's telling historical story, but it's using vernacular that we're used to that makes it so any modern person can come and understand this history in a way that relates to them and is, um, yeah, just understood by them because it's using phrases and terms that we use. After having spent so much time in these characters, do you think of what the real queens would make of, of how their legacy is being constructed on this stage? I feel like Catherine would be proud. I feel like because she was um, described as such a strong, powerful, stern woman. And you think the same? I think the same too because anytime, you know, we do, we make them cheeky, we make them sassy, we make them silly, we make them, they're soft, they're hard, they're fiery, they're demure, like they can be all of these things. And when I think of how Anne Boleyn must be looking down and thinking about us, Women exist in multitudes. So far in history, these women have been depicted as these two-dimensional characters, mm. but we're bringing them to life and breathing new life into them and showing that they have all of these different sides of them that women do have. I'm curious about the costumes, and I was mm. reading the that- Tony award-winning costumes. Yes. The Tony award-winning <laughs> costumes. They're, they're kind of, there's some code in there. Oh yes, um, let's see, Anne Boleyn and Howard wear chokers to represent the beheaded Cousins. <laughs> um, gold chains is all I wear. It's just chains, spikes, chains, spikes. Um, and it actually represents a nice warrior um, costume. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a body of armor. Mine mm -hmm. is, it's very heavy in real life. <laughs> it looks heavy, but it is actually very heavy in real life. You must think that I'm crazy. You won't know who place me, baby, there's and the crown is ap actually representing um, the crown that Beyonce wore. So it is very representative of Beyonce and like this golden status that Catherine has. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many other little little things in the costume. Mm -hmm. well, well, talking about wearing all of that weight and how much you're doing in this show, mm -hmm. is there a physical regimen that you, you both need to have to, to survive this show? <laughs> I started off the process um, because my costume is so heavy and now they actually currently start all of the Catherine of Aragons off with a weighted vest. Um, I didn't get that luxury when I started. Uh, they just started it after our company. Um, and I actually had a regimen every day of waking up at 7 a.m. and running on the treadmill, which is actually a practice that Beyonce does, um, running on the treadmill and singing the first 25 minutes of the show because Catherine doesn't get a break. Um, she jumps from the opening number to the opening scene to her song. She doesn't get a, a second to breathe. Mine's a lot of... <laughs> Pilates and strength training and just we're doing plenty of cardio in the show. You know how audiences have been with this show. Do you understand why it's resonating so much? Yeah, especially with our cast. We are one of the only cast um, that is completely women of color. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a bit more, it gives me a bit more joy and a bit more oomph underneath my performance because I get to look out into that audience and see not only every little girl, but every little person in this queendom that makes up the queendom, all the fans, like you, they get to see themselves represented in every single shape, color, form yeah. in this show, in this, in our cast specifically. <laughs> My heart just explodes with just joy. And then for little girls at the stage door, it just, it makes it all worth it at the end of the day. The show really preaches, again, your cis shining does not dim your light. You do mm. not need to compare yourself. You do not need to make that make you feel small in the show. I actually I, have a quote in my bio that's yeah. in, the pro, in the playbill that says, if the sun does not ask permission to shine, then why should you? And I very much so live by that because yeah, I don't ask permission to shine. I don't expect anyone else to ask mm -hmm. permission to shine. Like, it's just what you should do when you wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's, so it's a proverb to live by. I love that. <laughs> well, you both filled this room. <laughs> this was so <laughs> exciting and fun. Thank you so much, and congratulations on the show. Thank you. <laughs>